I, I personally think that what what you'd find if you gave people a choice, whether they be wealthy or not, if you gave people the choice of an indirect taxation system and a regressive benefit system, so the people at the bottom get the benefits that they need socially funded and the people at the top get less or nothing at all, I think you'll find that people would be a lot happier. Because, and you'd probably find there'd be a lot less tax avoidance because nobody could be bothered. Because people yeah. would just sit there and say, you know what, I get to keep my money and, you know, I'm taxed when I spend it. Fair enough. Before we start, we need to tell you up front we are not a licensed financial planning, accounting or law firm. This is simply an education program which will give you factual information. We do not give any general or specific advice around finance, business investing, options trading or anything else. That is not what this presentation does. Please see a licensed financial planner when it comes to any investment advice you need. Good, Whitaker. So it's interesting in terms of uh, economic outlooks as far as uh, US is concerned mm -hmm. is that uh, JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon has said that he would not rule out an outcome for the US economy which is widely considered to be worse than a recession and he's going into the whole thing of the worst is stagflation. Haven't seen that since the 1970s, the US, but it's basically a combination of economic stagnation and inflation. Prices, they continue to soar sure. at the same time as unemployment rises and economic growth slows. So it's a bit of a triple whammy. And funny enough, that was about energy, if you remember. Remember, fuel prices went through the absolute roof. You had big, long lines waiting for the bowers as people waiting hours and hours, almost like they've got Teslas, to get refuel. Uh, it was a big, big thing that... that you know, that stifled and caused so much damage to the US and the world economically through the 70s. Yeah. Mm. So it's interesting that Trump well, is maybe a solution to this. If, if unemployment's getting too high, maybe they should uh, bring more immigrants in. Maybe that'll help. Yeah. Jeez. Particularly mm. Fiji Indians, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because we weren't. Well, I don't know about I don't know about You're no good anyway. Great scaffolders. <laughs> <laughs> So what's interesting in this is, okay, the Fed Reserve is is looking at to trying to get inflation down to about 2% target. That's kind of right. where they like it, 2 okay. to 3% is their ideal situation. Um, but it's interesting to see Trump's policy come out here going, look, if this occurs, yeah. if these economic outlooks slow down, we're going to get Americans working through, doing overtime, mm -hmm. tax breaks for that. That's an interesting kind of setup if, if he's foreseeing what's going and I playing agree. out here. And this is not just a financial rebirth of the US. This is also a psychological one, right? This is so good for people. People, their lives have value when they're working, when they're productive, when they're, you know, moving forward for their family. And when you're just bringing immigrants in left, right and centre, when you're, you're just having a, a very much a welfare state, people are not, they're not building as, as themselves. Their personalities stay stagnant and it becomes quite a trap. So this is a great thing for the actual value of the human being. Well, it's one the of those things that people resent as well, because the United States, like here, has a very progressive, these are actually worse than us. Um, but if you remember how we used to be, we had like six or five or six different uh, different tax brackets. Um, mm -hmm. The United States, I think, from memory, has like seven or eight, I can't 100% remember. So what that means is that when people do overtime, they're often taxed at a higher rate sure. because their total income has gone up. So that, that overtime amount, not only... Not only do you have the insult of government taking that money, but then they actually take a higher percentage of that money as well. And for a lot of people, you know, I, I know people here in Australia that will say to me, look, you know, I do, I do an extra, you know, one shift a, a week or something, um, you know, an extra like four hours or, or six hours a week, and I take that money and put it aside because I'm saving up to buy something for my kids or I, I use that money for, you know, the Christmas holidays or whatever. And along comes the government to say, oh, we'll take 40% of that. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah, we'll it, take another people have a right to feel to feel as though it's unfair. So I think giving tax breaks to people, the working class people, is a great idea. And having some system of indirect taxation. So we talked about tariffs before. I, I think tariffs will be a good idea, but just not across the board. Across the board, you'll find that can hurt uh, hurt exports. But a system of indirect taxation, I think, is fantastic. And really... What I think the United States should look at is a national sales tax uh, in return for a reduction in the income tax. I don't think they'll ever do it, 
but certainly Australia could do it. We, we could easily see ourselves go up to a, a 15% GST. I'm not sure how Australians would feel about it, but a 15% GST and a drastic reduction in the income tax. I mean, yeah. I, I personally think that we could, people talk about the capital gains tax should be the same as the income tax. Um, superannuation is, is taxed at 15%. So why don't we just scrap everything? Go to a 15% GST and a 15% income tax, 15% capital gains tax, uh, and a 15% corporations tax. I think you'd see a, a huge boost in economic activity. Do you remember John Hewson trying to sell a consumption tax? I mean, you know, it was all about birthday cakes and all that sort of thing. And yeah, but it just it became it was such a mess, and obviously, it eventually. Yeah, but through. what year was that? Okay, this is what uh, it would have been nineties, yeah, early nineties. It was before I was an adult. Okay. Well, so remember, I'm 10 years been, younger than you. Could have been last week with you, but okay. 10 right. points. <laughs> but, but Dr. Hewson did a poor job of it. Even yeah. when yeah. even when John Howard tried to propose it, there was stuff about birthday cakes and all that sort of stuff, but he managed to get it through. Yeah. yeah. So information back then, you had to rely on Channel 7, Channel 9, the West Australian, the Australian newspaper. So now because the ability to find information is so much better, I think, if you are going to try and push that sort of policy or if you don't have a radical change in the way the taxation system works, sure. I think you, you don't have to – you have to have a good couple of year lead up to it. Mm -hmm. you got to start under, explaining to people what the GST actually is, how it works, and then if you are going to boost it, not only your income tax has to be come down, but things like stamp duty on mm -hmm. housing, cars, insurances. Like you've got to give and take. So if you don't – increase the goods and services tax you've got to take your tax away you can't just be oh we don't add an extra tax because we can so then you'd be late no, and, and, and what's his name um it's got mental blank on his name for a second <coughs> the former prime minister which, which one? one which one <laughs> <laughs> which one the one that stabbed abbott in the back um Oh, Julia Gillard. <laughs> no 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 that's, sorry, that's wrong side i don't know there was turnbull. Stabbing the back. turnbull turnbull malcolm turnbull so he had suggested a 15% GST. Um, I don't think that worked very well. But if you look at the countries that, like, say, Monaco, I know it's a very bad example. Let's look at Monaco, for example, right? They've got no income tax over there. They do have uh, a VAT. Um, you know, I, I personally think that what, what you'd find if you gave people a choice, whether they be wealthy or not, if you gave people the choice of an indirect taxation system and a regressive benefit system so that the people at the bottom get the benefits that they need socially funded and the people at the top get less or nothing at all, I think you'll find that people would be a lot happier. because And, and you'd probably find there'd be a lot less tax avoidance because nobody could be bothered because people yeah. would just sit there and say, you know what, I get to keep my money and, you know, I'm taxed when I spend it. Fair enough. Yep. Yeah, no. So, vehicle. but doesn't isn't Dubai the same? They don't have an income tax. Well, so Middle East, or well, well, actually Dubai, is is introducing an income tax, and they have actually got a five percent sales tax now. But I think the Middle East is a little bit different because a lot of the misunderstanding of the Middle East as being a low tax place is that they have extremely high taxes on their oil exploration. Mm -hmm. So their their taxes are at fifty percent on on oil and 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 oil based uh, products. Uh, in return, the people get a 0% income tax. Now, I do want to say, I looked at a, at a particular mine, I believe it was in Indonesia, this is many years ago, and the deal with the government over there was the same thing. It was, you can you, you, you can invest your money or whatever in, into developing this mine site, then you can recover your money, plus recover, you know, the cost of funding, like, you know, your interest payments and all the rest of it. Once you've recovered that, 50% of the product of that mine comes to us and you can have the other 50%. I yeah. think actually that's quite reasonable. And I think that that's potentially a change that we could make in Australia because at the moment, all of the mining profits are going overseas. So why not have those profits actually stay here in return for lower taxes across the board? Now, whether so, the mining industry would accept that or not, I don't know. But again, if you have a look at Norway, <coughs> Norway is another one where energy producers um, whether they be renewable otherwise, it's the same sort of deal. They get to recoup their money. Then it's a 50-50 split with the government. But out of your 50%, you then have to pay the normal corporate uh, the normal corporate tax rate. So very, very highly taxed, but it's an industry that you can't you can't move that. You can't globalise that. And that's what we have to deal with is, is industries where they have to be here and then we can deal with how to tax 
uh, you know, international companies that operate within our jurisdiction. The United States should be looking at that. The UK should be looking at that. That would be real progress towards tax reform to make the tax system fairer so that people at the bottom are, are not feeling like the rich are just going totally over them. And the rich aren't feeling as though they're, they're being punished by confiscatory taxes. Okay, yeah. No one wants to be, you know, punished for their success. It's not fair. It's, it stops you from being incentivized. Uh... Thank you.